These five cameras are all under $200 each. They're all interchangeable lens, and I chose one camera from five different manufacturers with different lens mounts. Just so no matter what your previous experience or current lens and camera setup is, there will hopefully be a perfect option for you on this list. Now this video took a ton of time and effort to create, so please consider dropping a like and subscribing to my channel if you enjoyed this video. But I don't wanna waste your time, so let's just get right into it. This is five cameras for photos and videos for under $200. This video is sponsored by Audio, but more on them later. All right, the first camera we're talking about today is the Sony A5000. So you can pick up this camera for about $190 used, and I'm gonna go ahead and link a few different places you can buy it from used down in the description, and those are affiliate links, so if you buy through those links, I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Now, if you don't wanna use those links, I recommend either mpb.com, keh.com, or ebay.com to get the best deals on used camera gear like this. So this is a mirrorless camera that was released by Sony in 2014. So this is just about a 10-year-old camera now, which is why I'm talking about buying it used. You actually can't buy this camera or any cameras on this list new. So the A5000 has an APS-C size CMOS sensor with a 1.5 times crop factor, and this can shoot 20 megapixel raw photos. And 20 megapixels is more than enough for really any type of photography. For example, all the iPhones up until the iPhone 14 Pro had 12 megapixel sensors, and iPhones always took great photos, at least for cell phones. And an even better example, the camera I'm recording this on right now, my A7S III from Sony, has a 12 megapixel sensor as well, and that's been my main photo camera for years now, and I've had no issue with 12 megapixel photos. So 20 megapixels in this is 100% more than enough resolution. Now this camera can also record 1080p video at 20 four frames per second. No higher resolution or frame rates than that, so it's a little bit limited when it comes to video recording. And this also has Sony's E-mount, which is a mirrorless lens mount, and that's one of the most versatile lens mounts. There are hundreds and hundreds of lenses from Sony, as well as third-party manufacturers directly made for this lens mount. But being a mirrorless lens mount, you can also adapt a ton of DSLR lenses to this camera with really cheap and simple adapters. So there's almost an unlimited selection of lenses you can use on the Sony A5000. And again, the Sony E-mount is one of the most versatile and one of my favorite lens mounts personally. Now if you go ahead and flip this camera around to the back, you can see there's a 3 inch tilting LCD screen. Now this isn't a touch screen and it's not fully articulating so it can't flip out to the side and flip all the directions, but it does do a full 180 degree flip so if you want to take pictures of yourself like selfies or if you want to vlog with this, you're going to easily be able to see yourself with this 180 degree flip screen. But it doesn't tilt down at all so if you are taking high angle photos it'll be kind of hard to see it there. But I'm just really happy to see at least it has a 180 degree full flip screen here, even though it's not fully articulating and it's also not a touch screen. Now this camera has no built-in viewfinder, it has no built-in hot shoe, However, it does have a built-in flash, which is nice to see. But I would have really liked to see a hot shoe built into this camera, but it doesn't have any of that. So there's no way to mount an external flash or microphone or anything like that on this camera. Now the A5000 has an ISO range between 100 and 16,000. Now this camera, as well as all the cameras on this list, since they are older, more budget cameras, they're not gonna perform exceptionally well when it comes to ISO and low light performance. But I did run ISO tests with all of these cameras just so you can see how much grain and noise is in the images at a certain ISO level. And so I'm gonna show you that whole test so you can kind of make your own judgment on what ISO level you would prefer using. But none of these cameras are gonna perform exceptionally well with ISO and noise levels. Now in its burst mode, this camera can shoot four photos per second, which also isn't exceptional, but it's understandable at the age and the price point of this camera. It also has no built-in stabilization of any kind. However, if you do have a lens with stabilization built in, it will be able to utilize that. And then on the left side here, you have one SD card slot, and it's nice to see it on the side rather than on the bottom with the battery slot because a lot of times your tripod plate or tripod will cover up that slot and you won't be able to remove your SD card or battery without taking it off the tripod and taking your plate off and everything like that. Now this quarter 20 thread 
isn't blocking the battery plate as much as a lot of other cameras would. But again, it's still really nice to see the SD card slot is on the side rather than on the bottom. And on that same side, you have a micro HDMI output and then a micro USB, which can also charge the battery of this camera internally without having to take the battery out and put it on its own charger, which is also very nice to see. And lastly, this camera has no sort of weather ceiling and it comes in at 269 grams. So a very small and light camera, and you've probably seen that this entire time. This is such a pocketable camera. It's really nice for portability, for traveling and everything like that. Although it doesn't have that many buttons and customizable dials or anything like that, you wouldn't expect a crazy amount on such a small camera. And I think just the size is its main standout feature of this, rather than all the different features and functions and things like that. So a few more quick things to mention, you can actually wirelessly connect this to an app on your phone and you can transfer photos and videos to your cell phone. You can't use your phone as like an external monitor or anything like that, but you can transfer photos and videos easily to your phone wirelessly if you wanna download the app and go through all that. Personally, I just use the SD card and just put them on my computer and go from there. But really the biggest standout feature of this camera specifically is just how small, light, pocketable, and portable it is. But now I wanna talk about a few of the cons of this that I noticed, as well as who I'd recommend this camera to. All right, so first things first, the autofocus in this camera, especially in its video recording modes, but even in photo modes, it's pretty finicky. It kind of jittered back and forth a lot for me and never really was confident in what it got focus on. It was always questioning the focus and trying to fine tune it. And the focus was overall just a little bit finicky. Now this camera is great for using manual lenses and I typically used manual focus when shooting with this camera because of those weird autofocus issues. And also I brought this up earlier, but there's no hot shoe on this camera. I really would have liked to see that. But there also isn't a microphone input for video. So the only thing you'd really need to mount on this would be an external flash, since you can't really use a microphone on this. But I really still would have liked to see the addition of a hot shoe. It would have been well worth the you know additional size and weight in this camera just to add a simple hot shoe. Now there's also no viewfinder on this camera, which definitely plays into the fact of why this is so small. Viewfinders definitely add more weight than like a hot shoe would. But the screen itself is kind of low resolution. It's not super bright. And especially when you're outdoors on a sunny day, it's pretty hard to see what you're taking pictures or videos of. And it's very difficult to get focus without having a viewfinder built into this camera. Now, personally, I wouldn't call that a deal breaker not having a viewfinder. But if you do a lot of sunny, bright outdoor photography, you'll definitely notice it and it'll be kind of annoying. And lastly, if you're looking to purchasing this camera for video recording, it just generally lacks a lot of video recording features. So there's no mic input. The only recording option is 1080p at 24 frames per second which at least is 1080p and that 720p like another camera on this list is. But pair that with not very good video autofocus and this just isn't overall the best camera for video which really sucks to see since it does have that flip screen which kind of makes it seem like it'd be a good idea for you know beginner really pocketable small size vlogging camera. But I would say there's definitely a better camera on this list for video recording if that's what you mainly want to purchase a camera for. But I would recommend this camera if you just want a really tiny portable camera for travel photography or something like that and something you just want to start building your lens collection with a sony e-mount is great if you plan on sticking with sony so you can get sony e-mount lenses for this camera and get used to shooting in manual mode and get used to shooting with a mirrorless camera and then eventually you can keep those same lenses and upgrade your camera body to something like an a6600 a6700 or even a full frame camera like the sony a7 IV or a7c and again you'll gain all that practice with this camera but still be able to keep the same lenses with a much higher end body but that's it for the sony a5 5000, let's move on to the next camera. All right, next up we have the Nikon D7000. So you can pick this camera up for about $200 used. It's right towards that top of the end of the $200 budget, but this camera packs a crazy amount of features. So this is a DSLR camera from Nikon that was released in 2010. So this is a very old camera. I think it's the oldest on this list, but don't let that fool you. This has some awesome like pro level photography features that I'll get to in just a minute. So this has an APS-C size CMOS sensor with a 1.5 times crop factor. It can shoot 16 megapixel raw photos and also record 1080p video at 24 frames per second. So same video capabilities as the last camera, the Sony A5000, except this camera is a DSLR camera with Nikon's F mount. And so you can tell it's a DSLR about how much bigger it is than the last camera, which was a mirrorless, because this has to have a big mirror built inside of it there. Now, if you flip it around the back, this has a three inch fixed screen. So this isn't a touch screen and it's not articulating or adjustable in any way. It's just fixed right on the back there. And it's also another very low resolution screen, 
which is pretty common to see on these older cameras. And on the back, you have this optical viewfinder, which is really nice to see. A lot better than looking on this kind of dark, dull, you know, low resolution screen on a sunny day. This camera can shoot up to six photos per second. Again, nothing amazing, but at this price point and age, Six photos per second is pretty decent to see. The D7000 has an ISO range between 100 and 6400, but it does have an H1 and an H2 mode that are effectively 12,800 ISO and 25,600 ISO. And once again, I will show you the full ISO test on this camera, just so you can see how each ISO performs. This camera has no built-in stabilization, but it does have a built-in flash right up top here. And for SD card slots, this has two SD card slots right on the side. Now this is one of those pro level features that this is the only camera on this list that has two SD card slots. And that's really awesome to see. And even nowadays, dual SD card slots are really saved for the higher end cameras. And that's a great addition to see in the D7000. And the last but not least, this camera does have weather sealing, which is also a great thing to see in something that's usually reserved for higher end cameras. And it comes in at 780 grams. So like I said, this is definitely a bigger and bulkier camera than a mirrorless camera like the A5000 that we just looked at. So some of the standout, you know, pro level features that this camera offers are like I said already, the dual SD card slots. It has weather sealing as well, which is the only camera on this list with weather sealing. You also have this LCD screen up top that shows just some of your main settings. So you can see those without having to look down your viewfinder or check your screen. You can just easily check them all the time. You have a great feeling magnesium alloy body with a nice deep grip. It feels really good in the hand. It has a ton of weight to it, which isn't really a pro or a con. I think it feels really good in the hand, but keep that in mind. If you do have a heavy lens to put on this as well, it's pretty hefty in the hand. You also have a ton of buttons and dials all over this camera. You have buttons on the front here, on the side, on the back, the top. You have buttons and dials that you can easily adjust all of your settings with without having to dive into the menus just to adjust simple settings. And then lastly, for these pro level features, the menu system on this camera is pretty in depth as well. It has a lot more in depth features than other cameras, which again adds to the fact that this is a more mid to high end level DSLR camera. Now, when it comes to the cons of the D7000, I honestly don't have any cons to mention. You know, I tried to think of some, and at the $200 price point, this camera just punches so much above its weight class in terms of photography features at least. I really just, I don't have any cons to say about this camera at its price point. So who would I recommend this to? Honestly, if you want to focus mainly on photos, you don't plan on doing really any sort of video at all, you just want a great photography camera at a $200 price point, this camera pretty much can't be beat in terms of just the raw specs at $200 for an interchangeable lens camera. Now it does record decent quality video and it does have a microphone port on the side so you can put an external microphone, get good audio in 1080p 24 frames per second. But the autofocus and video mode is pretty bad so you kind of have to use manual focus. And again, this is definitely better than the A5000 in terms of just video features. Having that mic input is really good to see. You have a hot shoe up top that you can attach the microphone to. But again, I'd probably recommend using manual focus and being limited to only 1080p at 24 frames per second. You can't do any sort of slow or motion stuff or anything like that. You can definitely get away with it. And this is one of the better video cameras on this list. But in general, at a $200 price point, it's just kind of difficult to get good looking videos with good features that you'd normally see in something even like an iPhone. Honestly, with all these cameras, you can definitely get better looking video than an iPhone with the right lenses. But newer cell phones are just so good when it comes to photos and videos nowadays that it's just hard to recommend, you know, a $200 camera that can only record 1080p at, you know, 24 or 30 frames per second with maybe a microphone input. It's just hard to recommend those with how good cell phones are nowadays, and they're always in your pocket as well. But when it comes to photography, this is such a good value camera, and I would definitely recommend looking into it.
But that's it for the Nikon D7000. Let's move on to the next camera. Real quick, I have a message from today's sponsor, Audio. So Audio is a music subscription service that has a highly curated catalog of music and sound effects for creators, with brand new tracks being added on a daily basis. Now they're offering annual access to the Audio Pro plan for 70% off, which makes us $59.70 for an entire year of service. That makes us the best value for money and legitimately the most affordable deal in the music licensing market today. So Audio customers can download any and an unlimited amount of music and sound effects on the platform to add to films, social media, podcasts, branded content, and so on. Now, all of the music and sound effects that you download during your subscription period are yours to use forever. So if you ever decide not to renew your subscription, you'll never have to worry about copyright issues in the future. Now, my favorite part about audio is just how in-depth all the filters are for sorting through to find the right music. You can include and even exclude all the different filters to help you find the perfect track for your project without having to sift through just tons and tons of random tracks. So if you go ahead and click my link down in the description and use code FOXTAILWHIPS, you can get an entire year of unlimited music and sound effects for only $59.70. Alright, now let's get back to the video. Alright, next up, this is the Pentax KR. So you can pick this camera up for about $150 used. And this is a DSLR camera from Pentax that was released in 2010. So this camera has an APS-C size CMOS sensor with a 1.5 times crop factor. It shoots 12 megapixel raw photos, so it's the lowest resolution camera on this list. But like I said earlier, 12 megapixels can still get you amazing looking photos. It is 100% enough resolution, especially when you're spending less than $200 on a DSLR camera. Now this camera can only record 720p video at 30 frames per second, so it's very limited when it comes to video recording. There's also not manual video recording, so it's going to automatically adjust all the settings for you, which is another kind of big limitation when it comes to recording video. So this is definitely a very limited video camera, but when it comes to photography, this takes great looking photos. So for the lens mount, you have the Pentax KAF2 lens mount, which can use newer autofocus Pentax lenses as well as the older vintage manual focus Pentax lenses, which is awesome to see. On the back here, you have a three inch fixed LCD screen. It's not a touch screen and it's not articulating in any way, just fixed right on the back here. It's another pretty low resolution screen, but luckily there's an optical viewfinder on this camera as well. So when you take photos out in a bright sunny day, it'll be a lot easier than looking at that screen. This camera can shoot photos at a burst rate up to six photos per second. So the same as the Nikon D7000, it's pretty decent. You really wouldn't expect more in a less than $200 camera, honestly. You have an ISO range between 200 and 12,800 ISO. Now this camera does have built-in stabilization, which is great to see. It has stabilization for photos and videos. It can definitely give you better looking photos if you shoot handheld and with a long zoom lens. The built-in stabilization is a great feature to see at this price point. You also got a built-in flash up top. You have one SD card on the side here. And lastly, this camera is not weather sealed and it comes in at 598 grams. So this is a DSLR, but it's definitely smaller than the Nikon D7000 and a lot lighter. You can see my pinky kind of hangs off the bottom here. The grip isn't quite as good or you know bulky and deep as the D7000, but it actually is surprisingly good. And this camera feels really good in the hand. But in terms of buttons and dials and stuff like that, it's definitely pretty limited. But this was an entry level camera when it was released, so it's kind of going to be more limited in that aspect versus the D7000 again, which was more of a mid to high end camera. So a little limited on buttons and dials, but definitely enough to get you by. I really didn't have any issues when using this camera. Everything was really straightforward and taking pictures was a breeze with this camera. So some of the standout features of this, like I said, it was really straightforward and just simple to use. It has that built-in stabilization, which is awesome to see. And if you do have a lens with built-in stabilization as well, it'll pair with the lens to give you even better stabilization for your photos and videos. The photos out of this camera have great colors and they're really great quality. Even though it's the lowest resolution on this list, the photos out of this camera are fantastic still. And now here's something really cool. So on the bottom you have a typical rechargeable battery that all these other cameras have as well. But this is actually a dual slot to where you can put this typical rechargeable battery or you can put four AA batteries in there as well. So it's kind of cool if you don't have a charger with you, but you think you might need extra batteries like on a trip or something. You can obviously buy AA batteries pretty much anywhere or just bring some with you just to swap in there if your batteries die. 
I personally probably will never use AA batteries in this camera. I just think it's kind of cool to see that there's a double battery slot in here. We can do AA's or there's the typical rechargeable batteries. Now when it comes to cons with this camera, again, at this price point, this is a great camera. It has great colors, good ergonomics. It's really easy to use, but the video really just isn't that usable in this camera. I wouldn't recommend buying this camera for video. That's the only con I really have for this. Don't buy this camera if you want to record video with it. Honestly, any newer cell phone is going to have a lot better video quality than the Pentax KR. But for 150 bucks, Pentax makes some awesome lenses. Like I said, you can get some vintage lenses for really good prices as well. And this is just a great Pentax camera for 150 bucks. But that's it for the Pentax KR. Let's move on to the next camera. All right, next up we have the Canon T4i. So you can pick this camera up for about $160. And this is a DSLR camera from Canon that was released in 2012. So this has an APS-C size CMOS sensor with a 1.6 times crop factor. It shoots 18 megapixel raw photos, so a pretty high resolution 18 megapixel sensor. This camera records video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So still 1080p video, but a little bit higher frame frame rate than the other cameras that are limited to 24 frames per second. Now this also has a microphone jack, so you can attach a microphone to this camera to get better quality audio, which is great to see for video features in the camera. In the front here you have Canon's EF mount, which is probably the most popular lens mount of all time. There is essentially an unlimited amount of lenses you can get from Canon or from third parties for the Canon EF mount with autofocus, stabilization, manual focus, Anything you can think of, there's lenses for the Canon EF mount, and also in pretty much any price point. Then if you flip it around to the back here, you can see this has a three inch fully articulating touchscreen. This is the best screen out of all of these cameras. It's a touchscreen, you can go through your menus, you can change your settings with the touchscreen. It's fully articulating so you can vlog with it or take selfies with it like that. You can flip it down here to get low angles. You can flip it that way to get high angle shots. This is just hands down the best screen out of all of these cameras. And also in the back, you of course have an optical viewfinder. You have a built-in flash right up top here. This camera can shoot photos at five frames per second. So again, nothing crazy, but five photos per second. It's pretty decent unless you do some crazy sports or action photography. This has an ISO range between 100 and 6,400 ISO. You have one SD card slot right on the side here. And last but not least, this camera is not weather sealed and it comes in at 575 grams. All right, so some of the standout features of the Canon T4i, first of all, everything is really straightforward and easy to use from just holding and using the cameras with all the button placement and everything, all the way down to the menu and going through the menu. Canon cameras have always been so straightforward and just simple and just great to use with pretty much everything. It also feels really good in the hand. It's definitely smaller and lighter in the realm of DSLRs, but it feels great in the hand. It has a fairly deep grip. All my fingers can kind of stay on. My pinky sometimes falls off a little bit, but I definitely have no issues holding and using this camera. It feels awesome in the hands. Now also, this camera has great fast autofocus in photos and it has good autofocus in video as well, which that paired with some of the other video features, the fully articulating screen, the microphone input makes this the best option for video on this list. Now I wouldn't call it an amazing video camera by any means, but for getting started and at this price point especially, this is a pretty good video camera. And of course for photos as well, this takes awesome looking photos. It has Canon's great color science. You know, it kind of fills in those video issues that the other cameras had while also taking great photos. You know, it's a pretty decent body. Again, this is an entry level DSLR camera, so it doesn't have any crazy, you know, photography features or anything like that. But this is an awesome all-in-one general camera at this price point, and I really, I really have nothing to complain about with this camera either. This is an awesome camera at its 160-ish dollar price point. All right, that's it for the Canon T4i. Now let's move on to the final camera on this list. Lastly, we have the Olympus EPL5. And so this camera you can pick up for about $180. So a little pricier on this list of cameras. And so this is a mirrorless camera released in 2012. This has a micro four third size sensor with a two times crop factor. It can shoot 16 megapixel raw photos. It can record 1080p video up to 30 frames per second. And this has a micro four thirds mount, which is another mirrorless lens mount that you can adapt a bunch of lenses to. The micro four thirds lens mount is another extremely versatile lens mount with 
almost unlimited lenses in any different price range for it. Now these are actually typically a lot lower price point lenses than other lens mounts on this list like the Canon EF mount and Sony E mount. The Micro Four Thirds lenses for this are typically a lot smaller, lighter, and cheaper. Now if we flip this around here, it has a three inch tilting touch screen. So it's pretty decent, but it's not fully articulating, but it does flip all the way up like this to kind of get that selfie view right there. It also flips up like that and kind of out. You can tilt it down. So this is a pretty decent screen. And like I said, it's also a touch screen. But there is no viewfinder on the back. Now I think you can purchase a viewfinder attachment that like connects to this, but you're gonna have to pay extra for that. And it doesn't have a viewfinder built in. Now this can shoot photos up to eight photos per second. So it's the fastest burst speed on this list. And eight photos a second is actually getting up there. It's pretty decent. But again, it's nothing compared to like the brand new expensive cameras, of course, that are gonna get up to like 20, 30, 50. And you also get an ISO range between 200 and 25,600. This camera also has built-in stabilization, which is great to see. And if you do have a lens with stabilization as well, it'll combine those together to get even better stabilization. So that is awesome to see. Now there is no built-in flash on this camera. I believe the only camera on this list with no built-in flash, but it kind of makes sense because this is another ultra compact and small camera. But what's really good to see that the A5000 didn't have is this has a hot shoe built in, even with it being such a small camera. I would personally much rather have a hot shoe than have a built-in flash. So it's good to see that on this camera, but again, no built-in flash if that's something that you typically want. And you do just have one SD card slot in the battery compartment at the bottom here. And this is one of those cameras where that quarter 20 thread is right next to this battery tray. So if you mount a, you know, a tripod plate or something, you're not gonna be able to open this battery door up, which means you won't be able to replace your battery or your SD card without pulling it off the tripod and taking that plate off and you know, all that sort of things. So kind of annoying, and I would have at least liked to see the SD card slot on the side of this camera, but it is what it is. They kind of had to pack everything into this small of a body as it is, so I can't complain too much. And last but not least, this camera has no weather sealing, and it comes in at a weight of 325 grams. So again, pretty much the main standout feature of this camera is just how small, portable, and pocketable it is. The autofocus is nothing amazing, and I personally use manual focus the whole time I used this camera. But don't get me wrong, it still takes great looking photos. There's just not any like exceptional standout features like some of the other cameras had on this list, but it does have that micro four thirds two times crop sensor. So that means if you use telephoto lenses on this, you're gonna have that two times crop on your focal length. So I really liked pairing this with telephoto lenses to get an even longer reach on them. And you can get some really good wildlife photos and stuff like that. And like I said, it also has IBIS built in, which means on those long lenses, you're gonna have a little bit better stabilization than you know the other cameras that wouldn't have any sort of built-in stabilization at all. But the video features are also somewhat limited on this. It does do 1080p at 30 frames per second, but there's no microphone input on this camera. Even though it does have the hot shoe where you can mount a microphone, there's no sort of three and a half millimeter microphone jack on this camera for an external microphone. I also kind of found the menus and, you know, changing settings and stuff in this camera a little finicky. It's very limited in terms of buttons and dials. The screen is pretty low resolution for, you know, going through the menu and checking your photos and stuff. And so that was a little bit finicky. Also, again, using this camera in the bright sunlight without a viewfinder, I had a lot of trouble getting focus with this. Luckily, you do have this focus zoom button up here that makes it really easy to zoom in and click it again just to zoom back out again, you know, for checking your focus with this camera. But again, I had a great time using this camera. There just aren't any really amazing standout features besides just how small and portable it is. And of course you have that Micro Four Thirds lens mount if you have Micro Four Thirds lenses or want to purchase those types of lenses. So who would I recommend this camera to? Honestly, this is another great travel, really tiny camera. Micro Four Thirds lenses that you usually purchase for are also very small and light. So you can build a tiny kit with this camera, or if you want to adapt vintage manual lenses, like I said, I typically used manual focus because with photos and videos, the autofocus isn't the best on this camera. And the Micro Four Thirds mount is great for adapting vintage lenses or really adapting any type of other DSLR lenses. So I would definitely recommend this if you want a tiny, really travel-friendly camera to take with you on vacation or with traveling or just to throw in your pocket, because again, 
This is an absolutely tiny camera. But there we go. That wraps it up for these five awesome cameras under $200 for photo and video. I really hope this video helped you out. And also, if you made it this far in the video, let me know in the comments. Just comment, I made it here down in the comments if you made it this far. And also, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, I'll leave links to all these down in the description and links to everything else you need to know down in the description of this video. Please consider liking and subscribing if this helped you out in any way, shape, or form. And let me know if you did purchase any one of these cameras as well. And I will see you in the next video.